Welcome to Pivot Points, a new series featuring some of the world's most successful women, candidly sharing their stories and insights about how they made it to the top, and how you can too. Hosted by Perry Yateman, a straight-talking global executive and award-winning author who created the career and life of her dreams, and now wants to help other ambitious women do the same. Hi, this is Perry Yeatman. My next guest is someone I've known only about a year, but I liked her right off the bat. You can't help but feel inspired by her optimism and enthusiasm. All the more impressive given she is both a busy senior executive and the mother of two special needs kids. And it is this combination that I think makes this interview both unique and important. She is not afraid to talk about the tough stuff and to share how she's found ways to not only deal with life's unexpected turns, but to find joy in them. She's worked for some of the biggest brands in the world, including Walt Disney, Hershey, and Jim Beam. And today she's the CCO at the American Dental Association. Throughout, she's been the architect of her own success, cultivating and leveraging mentors and support networks, and always making sure she had a champion to support and appreciate her talents and aspirations. Her name is Stephanie Moritz, and I'm so excited to introduce her to you today. Welcome, Stephanie. Oh, and thank you so much, Perry. I'm thrilled to be able to be here and talking with you today. Ah, I appreciate it. I think listeners are going to get a lot out of your story. So we've heard a little bit about where you are. Can we talk a little bit about where you began? So everybody had to kind of somehow get that first big break or launch, you know, kind of launch their career somehow. Could you tell us a little bit about what was your launch and why do you consider that particular opportunity to be the thing that really launched you? Yes, absolutely. So there actually were two, two key pieces I'll share. First, you know, really my bold start was with Walt Disney Attractions Incorporated. I had had an internship at Walt Disney World through their college program as an undergraduate. And then as I was completing my master's and approaching graduation, I knew I just wanted to take the leap and work for one of the just world's most iconic brands. Mm -hmm. So at that time, Disney had just purchased ABC Capital City. So it really seemed like the absolute perfect place to be in the center of the action with a great organization. And so I, I took that big step. So that really was kind of the beginning of my career in working with just an amazing brand. Mm -hmm. But then, fast forward a little bit, really my big break came a few years later when I worked for Jim Beam Brands. And at Jim Beam Brands, I started off as a manager. I was on the Jim Beam brand. And what was fascinating there was I was really the only female on on the Jim Beam (laughs) bourbon brand. So, So I brought a completely different perspective than all of my male counterparts. And it really, it just, it created a really good dynamic. So with it, the chief marketing officer, Tom Hernquist at that time, he, he saw, he saw something in me. He saw the passion. He saw the energy. He, he knew, you know, he knew, I think even before I knew that, that I was ready for that next step. And he promoted me to director. And I oversaw all of our brand PR, so for Jim Beam and the Kuiper and Vodkas and the Wine, as well as all of the corporate communications. Mm-hmm. So yeah. this just this was just absolutely huge to launch my career. And to this day, Tom is still, when I think about mentors and inspiring, passionate leaders, he still just comes right to mind. That is awesome. And, uh, and so lucky that that was one of your early jobs, right? I mean, a lot of people, they, they struggle to find an awesome boss. In fact, like my first really pivotal job um, was actually working for a complete jerk. Now, I learned a huge, he was brilliant. I learned a huge amount from him, but let us be clear, he, he did not teach me how to be a leader. He taught me how to not be a leader. But uh, at any rate. Uh, I, I think at some points we learn more from, from the leaders who are not as strong versus the ones that are strong, because you do, you learn about, all right, here are the things I don't want to do. Mm-hmm. So what can I embrace instead to be just that better, that better leader that I hope to, to aspire to or work for someday? Exactly. And for those who aren't as lucky to get that boss right out of the gate or early on, the only thing we can say to them is don't give up because there exactly. are good bosses out there. So every one of those, exactly what you said, Stephanie, every one of those is a lesson. Take what you can from every experience and move on. So there you go. And 
speaking of moving on, I want to now jump to mid-career. So um, I know, I, I believe you are married and you have kids. And so in this period, it often becomes very hard. I mean, there's just, there's always trade-offs and compromises throughout your career. But at this period where you've got caregiving on top of that, maybe a dual career family situation, et cetera, it's very hard for women. And, and a lot of us just drop out. We throw in the towel. We say, it's not worth it. We either don't need the money or we just, you know, can't, can't see how you're going to get through it on any given day. How did you make that period work for you? What did you do? What was your support system like, et cetera? Well, I'll tell you, it definitely takes a village. And, you know, for me, it, I am. I'm a mom. I'm a mom of, of actually two special needs kids. I have a 10-year-old who has Asperger's, which is high-functioning autism, mm-hmm. and he's also ADHD. I also, my daughter, who's seven, she, is, she has dyslexia and is ADD. Mm. So for me in this career, being not only a working mom, but a working special needs mom, you know, with my husband works as well. You know, this wow. talk about wow. you know, just life, I, right? Life just unexpected moments. Here. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So it is just, I'll, I'll tell you, you know, when you stand there and you're looking in the middle, of, you're looking at that tsunami, it, you could feel absolutely overwhelming. But you know what? I have become a better person. I'm a better mom. I'm a better businesswoman because of all of it. And in it, it's a roller coaster. Some days you're at the top of the roller coaster and some days you're at the bottom. But, but to be able to, to kind of keep that balance or just to be able to accomplish all of this, because I work in the city. I have about a two-hour commute each way. And my husband works close from home. He has stayed with the same company for 17 years and he has great flexibility. So he can be closer to the kids. Mm-hmm. We're also really lucky that um, my, my father-in-law, who's 80, and my brother-in-law, they drive an hour every day to come out to the house and get the kids ready for school. They do homework and they're there when they come home. So the kids kind of have the best of both worlds, you know, and where many times people are driving to soccer practice. They're driving mine to the therapy appointments, the mm-hmm. occupational therapy appointments, the tutoring, you name it. So it's definitely a, a, a different life than maybe what I had anticipated, but I always knew that I wanted my life to never be boring. And you know what? I got my wish. <laughs> you know? Oh, my God. I just love your attitude about that because, I mean, it is overwhelming. Even I, I only had to raise one. I, I, I have a stepson who's 27 now and a daughter who just turned 13. And so... The stepson, I got him at like nine, um, and uh, and he has, uh, you know, his own uh, full-time mom, right? Uh, and so I never raised him from scratch, if you will. So I only had one, um, and she um, is not special needs. She actually, by many accounts, and my sister tells me I'm going to pay for this later, but by many accounts, <laughs> she has been like brilliantly easy. Don't, don't let her know that, but she's been brilliantly easy um, so far. So when I think about everything on your plate, and you said you have a two-hour commute. So I'm going to come back to the commute because you must make that valuable somehow or you would, like, lose your mind. So I'm going yeah. to come back to that. But I just have to say good on you and thank you for sharing because, you know, I know there are a lot of professional women out there who have special needs kids and don't necessarily talk about it or are trying to figure out the, the additional requirements for that. And, and I'm definitely going to talk about that when I promote this podcast after we, after we get it done, because I want everyone to know that there are women out there who are really having great, amazing careers and are pursuing it and have figured it out. Not to say it all goes great, not to say that, as you say, the roller coaster, some days you're up, some days you're down, but you can do it. And I, I think that's really inspiring, Stephanie. So, okay. So now I do want to come back to our commute. What do you do to make that work for you? Yeah. To our commute. Now, Wow. You know what, um, it, it can be a challenge, but you know what, I'm fortunate where I am able to do some public transportation. So it's actually, it's a little bit of me time. So I'm able to read some books, get some emails done. It's also a really great time for me to reach out to the kids' teachers, connect many times the special education teachers to the psychologist or psychiatrist. So I do a lot of that work to kind of keep the family running and on track while I'm away. Mm, so, yeah. so for me, that part's also, that's really helpful. In addition, I've just recently started a, um, a special needs group, you know, recognizing this isn't something that people, many people don't talk about, but 
people aren't alone. So I also utilize that time to try to help others connect with the right resources or share the resources that I have. So it's a really a little bit of everything. And of course, then I'll throw in some text to my girlfriends or to my family, you know, just so that I can also have, have a life in addition to all of this. So, so that part has made it very doable as well as I'm also fortunate that I, that I am able to work from home. And this has been one of those elements that in my career, I've, it, this is, it's something that I need to have. It's, it's, it's a, it's a mandate. So, you know, for me, I really need to be able to have that one or sometimes two days a week from home. And that just makes all the difference in a world. Good for you. And thank you for sharing that. I want to now transition. Um, so I know that, and you just talked a little bit about it in terms of going, um, you know, to beam and then, um, what you're doing now, et cetera. How, have you even, you know, even really confident, capable women sometimes get really nervous or unsettled when they make a big transition? And that could be a personal transition or a professional transition. Do you have any kind of like advice or a playbook or something that you, you think about when you know you're about to make a transition? How do you do that successfully? What would you tell somebody who is at that point right now? I'd say go for it. I believe life is an adventure and you need to take those chances to grow personally as well as professionally and don't you know don't hold yourself back. So my recommendation would be just find the right fit, stay true to yourself and you know really leverage that passion and go where go where you're needed. So so be confident and and go for that step. Because again, at the end of the day, we can either sit back and hope that someone will drive us to where we want to go, or you can actually become the driver. And when you're the driver, you decide how you're going to show up. You are the one who makes the choices. You're the one who gets a chance to really determine kind of where do I want to go and what do I want to try. So I think having that adventurous spirit, being curious, and just going for it is critical. I love that. You get to be the driver. I, well, you know, I, I don't know what it is. I think it's genetic in my family that, like, every, our problem is we have way too many drivers, right? It's like everybody wants to be the driver. Not a lot of comfortable passengers, but I think you're absolutely right. And, and one of the things that I've heard a lot of people say, and I thought it was so powerful, and I wish someone had told me about it earlier on, but it's this concept of you need to, when you're transitioning, you need to not just be running away from something. You might be leaving something that you need to leave for whatever reason, but it, what's really important is that you're running towards something, right? That there's a positive thing that you're going for. And I think that when you talk about going for it and kind of not looking back, but just really looking ahead and throwing yourself in, I think that's awesome. And I think it's, of course, we know that's something women don't do often enough. We don't raise our hands often enough. We don't take big risks often enough. And I agree with you. I mean, dear God, what would life be if it wasn't an adventure, right? Don't we want that to be what it is? So, you know, hey, what's the worst that could happen? Go for it. I love it. Okay. I have another question for you. I want to jump ahead to kind of where you are now, the executive level, right? So you've arrived. You're at the top of your profession. We know that it's lonely at the top for a lot of people, even more so for women, You've talked a bit about how you've got a whole village for supporting your family and your kids, et cetera. Thinking about you more personally in your career, what's your support network there? You know, did you have a mentor or a sponsor or, uh, and if so, how did that come about? And, and, and how do you kind of make it work for you professionally at this level? Well, it's, I'm thrilled to be at this level. I mean, it's been quite a journey to get here. And, you know, with that, I've just walked away with so many great learnings and continue to build on them. And one is, it is the support system. I mean, one key thing that I found is just really unbelievable beyond, of course, my family, you know, that really makes it possible for me to, to go after what I love and to do what I love. But it's also, it's taking care of myself. Mm -hmm. So I do have a professional coach that I work with. I've worked with him for a number of years where he, he's really helpful not only when there are professional challenges, but also to remember that if you don't take care of yourself, you're not good to anyone. Mm -hmm. so, so I think that part's really helpful. Another one uh, certainly is just some of the informal groups that um, I found like one of the secrets to, I feel like my success is, 
really establishing these informal networking groups. So, for example, you know, most recently had a group that had, you know, similar communicators from non-competing industries from Redbox, from McDonald's, from Whirlpool, from AT&T, just really amazing companies. And we would get together regularly at different headquarters or at homes, and we could just have straight talk, really help each other out because we're living and breathing it. So if it's something that we learned, we could talk to others. If it's something that didn't work, we could share it. So just having those really honest conversations was huge. And then, you know, it just in addition to that, you know, in terms of support system, I've always tried to, you know, surround myself with really good people. So it is, it's, it's keeping some of those amazing connections and bouncing those ideas off of one another, folks that are local and folks that are far away. And then finally, I think a key is always having a champion. So I've been mm-hmm. very, very fortunate. The, the roles that I've been the most successful in have been where I have someone who believes in me and who's there to champion me and to help accelerate me and challenge me. And, you know, I've been very fortunate in my, in my career to have three individuals who I can point to. So I think that's really, I think that's just really key as, as you set yourself up for, for success and for the long term. I, I love that. And, Champion is such a fabulous word. There was, a, there was another phrase that a woman used in an earlier interview where she said, I am always looking for environments where I can be celebrated, not just tolerated, right? And I thought, yeah. wow. And the reason was that not just because of like, it made, sure it made her feel good. Of course that was true. But it was actually because she said, when that's the case, all of your energy goes towards delivering impact as opposed to kind of, you know, managing the bullshit, right? Honestly. Yeah. And so it's like, wow, how powerful that you have a champion and somebody who makes you feel great and supported so you can take those risks. Um, Question, how did you find that champion? Did you seek them out? Did they naturally just appear? How how did you build a relationship where you had a champion? You know, it's combination. A a combination of I looked for individuals that really inspired me. You know, who who is at that next level? Mm -hmm. You know, the story, their story in terms of getting there. And just their work and who they are as a person. So I really, combination, I would look for some of these individuals. In other cases, I was just very fortunate to be at places where they were at, but it's still finding them. And then it's striking up that relationship and really trying to learn as much as you can. I mean, when I think of, you know, one person that comes to mind for me is a man by the name of Gerald Johnson, who he always put people first. He always started off by asking how you were. He remembered the names of people in your family. He had that personal connection and he continues to be there to this day. And he not only knows you, but he also talks about the importance of how you can give back and help others. So, so I think it's a combination. Sometimes you're fortunate that they will find you, but, but don't wait. You need to take action and don't wait for it to come to you. Go out and actually seek out that individual because then really great things can take place. I love that. Do not wait. Go forth. Seek the right individual. You're absolutely right. I completely agree. All righty. So now we know what makes you thrive. I want to talk a little bit about maybe a time that wasn't so great. Um, every successful woman I know has had to overcome some bad breaks or big failures or been on the receiving end of some really unacceptable behavior perhaps. Um, since it clearly didn't derail your rise to the top, would you be willing to share one of the more difficult or outrageous things that happened to you, and, and how did you handle it? Yeah, absolutely. I think this is such a key piece. It's even more important to talk about what didn't work well or some of the challenges that are out there so that we can help people to just overcome them. So I'm thrilled you're asking me the question. Yeah, there was... You know, there have been a few times throughout my career where, where either I've been based more on my style versus my true performance mm-hmm. or metrics, mm-hmm. or, you know, I've been passed up for things. And one example is, you know, during a time where I had proactively, when social media was new, I proactively went out and benchmark with organizations, brought back in an enterprise-wide strategy. So it really could help accelerate the organization. And at that time, I was fortunate. I was expecting my my second child, my daughter. And I felt really good about about just what, what I had done, what my team had done. And if there was ever a year based on the results and the impact 
that I could get the ever elusive, you know, exceeds that top grade. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, this would be the year. <laughs> this would be it. Um, so I went. I went away. Went for my my three months. You know, three months. I came back ready, just chomping at the bit. And then performance time comes around, and I I just it's been a good year. I'm I'm excited. I can't envision why. I can't get that E. And then I was told that um, that. I had done good work, but, the elusive but, but that if I was there for the three months that I was gone, I would have gotten an exceed. <gasps> I needed to be there the entire time. And this just... Oh, oh. Very like, unac- like, like, sorry, the baby had to come out, right? <laughs> it's like, you know, it's kind of like, yeah. didn't really have Red a choice. Red flag, right? <laughs> yep. A big no-no. So it, that, that was shocking to me. And... Again, it just, I think you need to go into any situation with eyes wide open. And this is where I think fit's really important. And you need to go where you're wanted, where you are, are cherished, and where people can believe and buy into your strengths. I mean, secretariat's not great if you put secretariat in the barn. You really want to find a place that, that recognizes that secretary can get out and run and imagine the great thing. So this... That was a that was a pause. I hit the pause button on that. That that unfortunately was very telling. But I learned a lot from it, and I refused to let it get me down. Good for you. Good for you. And you know, and the thing is, so many other women have faced something very similar to that, and a lot of them have gotten derailed. Right? That they, they just it's because it's so unfair. Right? It's unfair, and yet people. And that's one of the things I think that is inspiring about your story. You could argue a lot of these things are quote unquote unfair, right? And the thing is, like I love this Eleanor Roosevelt quote. I think I used it in my high school yearbook or something. It was like, you know, nobody can make me feel inferior um, without my permission. And the other one that I was thinking even more aligns to this is the fact that you can't control what life throws at you. You can only control how you respond to it. And it's like, so you get that thrown in your face. And it's like, what do you do? And so I just want listeners to know and to hear, you know, what you did was you said, okay, I got it. I heard what you just didn't even necessarily mean to send me in terms of the very clear signal, but I am going to move on. I'm not forgetting it. It's, it's in there. I'm going to figure out how I'm going to get what I want and how I'm going to move forward despite that. And I think it's really, really important that people understand that these things do happen and that that's what you have to figure out. You can control only what you do about things that happen like that. So good for you. Good for you. Shedding a great example as a mom and as a woman and as a human. Let's go for that too. (laughs) Okay. I want to move into the fun round. Um, And that is really where um, I just ask a couple questions that aren't directly related to career advice, but I think are insightful for women to to get to hear about you and about your thinking and your career. So what is the one word you would use to describe your professional path so far and why? My one word would be adventure Mm. because it has been an adventure. I, I just, I feel blessed, you know, that Again, life is not exactly how I thought it would turn out. You know, it, it is in some cases I'd, I'd hope for a really rich career, and I'm so fortunate to have it. I'm very driven, and I think I'm a bit of a fighter by nature, just standing up for what I believe in. But, but it's definitely taking a different path. And you know what? And it's an adventure. I wouldn't, regardless of the challenges that have come up or things that I wasn't expecting, you know what, I really wouldn't change a thing because I believe any good adventure, you need to have those lows to be able to really cherish and savor the highs. And you learn so much that you just become a better person, a better human. And there's so much that you could give back. So life for me and my career has definitely been an adventure. I have nothing to add to that. I think that was a brilliant answer. I love it. Um, okay. What about a superpower round table? It could be a round table. It could be a lunch. You could have drinks. I don't care. Three to five women living or not, who would they be and why? Oh, this is talk about a great question. So I would pick Rosa Parks, mm-hmm. Amelia Earhart, <laughs> Mich- right? Awesome like, Got to yeah. have a little sass in there. These people don't, don't we're not going to sit back. They're going to lean forward. Michelle Obama, mm-hmm. And then Temple Grandin. And I would pick 
these amazing, amazing women, because they, they just epitomize bravery, you know, taking, in some cases, a, a small action and really making a stand that then had such a profound effect on women, women's history and where we're going. So I just think it would be an amazing conversation that would be inspiring and empowering. So I'd love to have them over and love to have a glass of wine with them. Me too. Please in- invite me if you ever get them together. <laughs> it sounds great. Um, okay, so uh, we're coming to the end. Uh, I so appreciate uh, your time, Stephanie. I just wanted to ask you, is there one question that you would have liked me to ask you that I didn't? I would love for you to just just ask, I would say more role models, just, you know, role models and understanding just that inspiration as well as, you know, maybe what keeps you moving forward in your career? You know, when you hit those, those really rocky points, you know, where can people go or what can they do, you know, to really overcome some of those main challenges? Mm-hmm. And what would your answer to that be? So, again, I think it really comes down to believing in yourself, knowing that you have a strong amount of self-worth and that you're not alone. And I think just being able to talk openly with others, share your challenges so that you can advance. It's also just, and beyond believing in yourself, it's just knowing that good things Good things can come, but you don't have to go about it alone. So I think we're, we live in such an amazing times where we can go on social media, where we can have virtual networks. There are just such possibilities and support groups out there that can really, truly help you cope with, you know, any challenge, any roadblock that you certainly hit. You know, I love that answer because I had a couple other people. One person actually said their superpower was um, in asking others for help because it's something that we as women, particularly as women professionals, we're really honestly bad at doing, right? I mean, I can't tell you how many decades I went without asking practically anybody for help, uh, let alone another woman, because I was just like, okay, no, I have to prove that I can do this, right? It was like a sign of weakness to ask for help instead of actually being super smart to ask for help. And so, yes, you can't ask for help for on every single task in your life and every single task in your job where people are going to say like, well, why do we need you if you can't do anything? But I think the idea of creating support networks, finding safe places to have real conversations, meaningful, honest-to-God conversations like, this sucks, I'm struggling, here's what's going on, whatever, where we are not posing, we are not posturing, we are not competing, we are just supporting and listening and helping, uh, and, and you're doing the same for others when it's your turn to be the one who actually people come to, I think it's so important. So, I applaud you for, for recognizing that. Now, is this part of your natural personality or is it something that you had to learn to do? Uh, that it was kind of like, for me, it's really foreign to do. Um, and I had to learn it. Um, and now I love it. Now I think, God, why did I ever try and do it all on my own? But for years, I mean, truly, it was decades. I just felt complete. I was isolated and I thought, I am just going to have to figure this out. You know what? This is something that has taken a long time for me to be able to ask for help mm-hmm. or to reach out. Um, in the past, I would just kind of go away. I would disappear or think that I had to handle these things all on my own. Mm-hmm. And with me, it really came when I had my children. And I realized, wow, there's really no playbook. How, where do I go? How do I, how do I navigate this whole world of not only parenting challenges and career challenges, but then getting what, them what they need. Mm-hmm. And it really taught me to be brave. It taught me to ask questions, to be the best advocate. If I'm not there advocating for my kids or myself, nobody else will. So I think this just helped me truly define my voice, both personally as well as professionally, to just to be that champion and, and not care about what other people are going to think. So, like, if you're on my Facebook page, I'm talking about autism. I'm talking about the kids. I'm sharing resources on dyslexia. I'm not afraid of it. You know what? My family, we're a package deal. (laughs) What you see is what you get. And I think upon seeing that, I've realized in life, what you see is what you get. 
And you know what? I want to find the right place in my career where I can deliver and it's the right fit. And you know what? There are there are right fits out there. So it's important to be able to talk about it because you know what? Not one person has all the answers. You need to be able, you know, by taking something good, you can make something better. But but reach out. You're not alone. I, I love that. I love that. I We are a package deal and I am what I am and you take what... I love it because, you know, that's... People always, when I got to craft, right, so I kind of, when I had made it, right, there really wasn't anywhere else for me to go. I was as high up as I could get uh, in, in, in our profession, and I said, okay, so now my office is just flooded with photographs, and I talk about my kids practically every, you know, meeting, and I would... And people, some people were like trying to advise me, like, Perry, really, that's not, um, you know, that's not helpful. And I said, no, actually, I'm trying to very consciously send a message. First of all, of course, I am obsessed with my, you know, I waited a long time to have them. You know, it's like, I am obsessed with my kids. They're yes. fabulous. And my husband, um, uh, you know, who every other day, I, I you know, it's like, it's, it's a fight, at, but I love him to death, right? So it's like, it's just, it is what it is. We have a unique relationship, but I adore him. <laughs> And so it's one of those things where, you know, I told people about it and, and I said, because I, I, you know, they are a major part of my day every day. And I am not going to pretend like I'm not a mom because it makes other people uncomfortable that I'm a mom because like you, I mean, I think like kind of five years after I had Kirsten, I wrote a piece that said, uh, it was probably for fortune. And I said, you know, being a mom makes me a way better CEO, right? There is no question. I'm a better professional today because I have kids than I was without kids. And, and yeah. just like you. And, and it's like, and most people think it's the opposite. Most people, most yeah. women think the kids are like the kiss of death for your career. And what I would tell you is, oh my God, because now I actually had so much more empathy. I had some, like everything, I was so driven and so focused and I'm very fast as you can tell. And so I really was, was too hard on my people, right? And once you have kids and you see actually that you're not just telling them what to do and you're not being hard on them, you're actually trying to support from behind and set some guidelines. The way you actually parent um, without smothering, right? If you're not a smothering parent, that that's exactly the way you can help coach your people. And they will res- respond because it's nurturing, because you have your their best interest at heart, because you listen to them, because you think of them as an individual. I mean, those are all the things that made me a better professional. So I think that's a great answer, and I love that you put it out there because uh, I do too, uh, and I think we just need more women willing to do the same so that we can all be who we are and everybody can recognize that this is the, this is the totality of, you know, when you hire me, this is what you do. We can't live anywhere. My husband's an <laughs> yes. open ocean yacht racer, right? We don't ever, I won't ever consider a job that isn't on the water, right? There has to be a really big body of water next to any job I could ever take. Uh, and people, you know, when I met, you know, headhunters, they're like, why these locations? And I tell them, ah, I'm married an open ocean yacht racer. This man is miserable if you take him away from the water. So trust me, it's not going to happen. So anyway, okay, we are at the end. I have one last question. It's kind of two questions. You can pick whichever one you want to answer, um, or you can answer both if you're so motivated. Um, but it says, if you could do it all again, what advice would you give your younger self? Or what's the best piece of career advice you ever received? Well, if I could talk to my younger self, I would say, don't worry so much. Don't sweat the small stuff. You know what? Good things will come. And don't take yourself too seriously. Don't take anything too seriously. You know, my husband always tells me, he's like, Stephanie, you know, for example, at Hershey, how long has Hershey been around? Like, oh, well, Hershey's been around, a, you know, a very long time. Well, they're going to be a lo- there a long time even after you. <laughs> so do your best. But the whole world is not going to crumble you know, if, if you need to step away or do something. So I would just, I would really tell myself to, to relax a little bit more, enjoy the adventure, you know what, and, and continue to take those risks, but also just to believe, believe in myself, believe in yourself when you are at those critical moments where, where your style is not the official style, or you do things a little bit different or you have different ideas, or you're working outside the box, that that's good, that that actually is what makes you great. So don't doubt that. Instead, really embrace your strengths, own who you are, look for those opportunities, and just run with it. 
Stephanie, I could not think of better advice. Like, I knew I liked you the minute I met you at that seminar or at the conference that we were at. And I, you've just proved exactly why through this interview. Thank you so much for your time. I know listeners are going to get a lot out of what you had to share, and we really appreciate it. Well, I think the world of you, Perry. So thank you so much. I hope, I hope that others do benefit from this, and I've really enjoyed it. So thank you. Thank you. You've been listening to Pivot Points, a series designed to help ambitious women have the careers and lives of their dreams. To hear more interviews, go to www.yourcareeryourterms.com. And be sure to tell us what you think. If there are topics you'd like covered,